Hi, this is Maginoni. Here's some comic reviews for you. We have Captain America number 11, The Mighty Avengers number 1, X-Men number 3, Avengers number 19, and The Hunt number 1. Well, let's just start off with Captain America number 11. Now, this is after the big, massive 10 is issue storyline. And, you know, Cap's finally free, and he's back in our own time. And it's basically him just getting settled in. And it looks like Maria Hill's almost kind of, um, you know, trying to get a little sexy time with Cap, but Cap says, nah, maybe not. And um, it's basically all it's doing is just resetting the status quo for him, uh, the direction the book is going to go, especially with Nuke at the end. And also, he take he goes to his old hi one of his old hideouts here, and he just like takes all of his memorabilia and just burns it, which I'm mean, kind of wondering, you know, why would you even do that part of it? But Again, this is him just moving forward and um, putting the past behind him. We do also get a little bit more of his origin story with his mom. I mean, overall, it's a decent raid. Great jumping on point now. So this way you can get right into the nuke storyline. Uh, and this is... Uh, but at the same time, even though I'm saying that this was a good raid, it, it's nothing spectacular. I think... Um, you will find some people out there, there who are really going to jump on this book and say that it was a fantastic story. Because this really is a character-defining book versus, um, you know, let's throw out some action. So for that part, it's really good. But uh, for me, after reading all those one-shots, uh, I didn't even finish them all, but with those villain books, I needed punching, and I wasn't getting it, so I was getting a little uh, impatient. But I'd still say it's a good read. Okay, Mighty Avengers. I was very disappointed to see Land was drawing this book because I hate Land's artwork. Um, it's not as bad as some of his other work, like especially when he was doing some of the Uncanny stuff. But every once in a while, you see those stupid faces, and you just, oh, I want to get marker and just color them out. Um, this is the basically going to be telling the story, at least as to... Uh, another like, uh, what, like how's Earth superheroes gonna handle Thanos and his crew when the Avengers are gone? So it's like a ragtag group of Avengers, or you know, like not really Avengers, but um, extras, heroes for hire, so to speak, and um, they're fighting off Kang's generals. Now, personally, I'm going. There's no way in hell these this that's gonna happen. But you know, it's comic books, so the heroes have to at least hold out until. Um, the, the main team comes in to save the day to fight Thanos. Overall, like I said, I have issues with the art because I just, just totally dislike Land. Uh, the story's decent. There's a little bit of humor here and there with Spider-Man and his interaction with Luke Cage. Uh, I don't really know how long I would actually stay on this. Uh, honestly, it's all going to... You know, I, I'm really close to really enjoying this. And I'm also really close to be going, um, it's droppable. And I think, if anything, if this thing didn't have the Infinity Banner on top, I probably wouldn't have picked it up, in all honesty. So, um, that gives you a good idea of where I am with this book right here. Okay, X-Men number three, Battle to Stay Awake. This book was so boring. Oh my god! somebody hit me with a baseball bat to wake me up. That is how uninterested I was in this story. It's basically a cat and mouse chase where you have the X-Men trying to catch up to Jean Grey and Cyclops. The experienced X-Men. You know, we're talking about the modern day and the future X-Men can't keep up with two trainees. I'm like, Shoot me now. This is so boring. Um, if anything, the only thing this book accomplishes is the relationship between Scott and Jean are getting a little bit closer again since Bendis was drifting them a little bit apart. So it does that book. I mean, sorry, it does that part of the story quite nicely. It also bridges the Scott Summers X-Men team at the end. But... It's just mind-numbing. I mean, the fact that... Okay, 
a couple points here I wanted to make up before, for, before I forget. You have Jubilee leaving her, the baby with the other trainee X-Men, you know, Beast and Iceman. And Iceman's like, what am I supposed to do with it? And she's like, well, you know, you're a superhero dude, or homo superior, figure it out, adapt. You know what I would do if I was Iceman? I would put the baby in a block of ice, and then you don't have to worry about it screaming. I'm like, really? Stay home and do your job, Jubilee, because you did nothing to contribute to this book whatsoever. And I don't mean this as a sexist remark. I'm saying this as she didn't do anything into any value in the story other than making a snappy comment. And I'm like, it's just painful to read this at times. Then, then you get this part where the, they have the two blackbirds, they finally cornered the X-Men, uh, you know, Gene and Scott, and they're like, and Scott's shooting them with his uh, an optic blast, and, and, uh, uh, Rachel and uh, company come and hit future Iceman with their plane car. And they're bitching at the other X-Men because um, they're causing a trouble for these two young kids. And they were told to stay home. And and they're even yelling at Wolverine and Wolverine did like, well, what did I do? I didn't do anything. And that's the truth. He did absolutely nothing. He was pretty much useless other than saying they're over there. And I'm like, oh, this is the third issue. When are we going to see the, the villains, the true villains? Where are we going to see the danger? We don't see anything, and I'm really getting worried that this thing is going to end horribly. And I'm like, I'm not happy. I mean, granted, there's a lot of issues here to come, but, you know, I would almost say anything that's written by Wood in this uh, storyline, I just wouldn't buy it. It's That's how boring this was. Okay. Avengers number 19. Now, this is heavily involved with Infinity. You have what happens to the, um, like, you know, the Miss Marvel, Hawkeye, and company when they're, uh, when they had trouble escaping. And, you know, as you can imagine, they get caught. And they do this really nice, potentially, um, you know, lesbianish uh, picture like that. You know, so that, that that's a prop. I, I give them props. Beyond that, I'm just reading this going, okay, you are the this interstellar destruction. And you're just destroying everything along the way. Why didn't you kill the superheroes? That's all I'm thinking. Why... I mean, I understand you want Miss Marvel so that way you can study her. Fine. Keep her. Why, why did you let the other ones live? Just just kill them and move on. I, and I don't understand this plot hole that supervillains, no matter how good or bad they are, they continually keep making the same simple mistake. And it's driving me crazy. You know, because don't forget, I mean, even though I'm saying, well, you're probably going, well, geez, Marginal, you, that's kind of stupid. You can't kill these superheroes. Of course you can kill the superheroes because you have a gardener on the other side, and he can probably just grow a planet to and birth all these superheroes back. So please, I mean, it, just kill them, make the story dramatic, and bring everybody back at the end so everybody goes, oh, thank God, I can now cancel my uh, hate letters that I wrote, and I can resubscribe again. You know, because that's all we want. We want gossip. We want to complain and bitch. And that that's the only time I think we're ever happy. But anyways, you have this council, war council, as to how they're going to handle um, the gardeners. Ever, you know, the, the not the gardeners, but the uh, builders. And you have a stupid, idiot guy. You know, um... <sighs> He basic well, I forgot the guy's name, but he, it's this, this, uh, I want to say it's Jayon or something like that. Yeah, J, Jay, Jay, Jason, Jason, that's it. He goes to the other side and he basically goes, well, you know, uh, if you want the earth, then um, we'll just step aside and you can go kill it. And then he, because of this transmission thing that he does, he allows them to figure out where they're at and they blow it up. And I'm just going, I can't wait till you die. I can't wait till you die. 
a thousand times because we know that if he dies he's just going to come back and we know he's probably not going to die for a long time because he's got to do something with the Guardians of the Galaxy because you know that's the Star Lord's father and they're going to make this character painful to just deal with on a on a monthly basis and oh my god this book just make gives me a headache already oh this month I mean sorry this week has just been a headache for reads now the art's good there is good build up even though I'm really harping on this thing there's some decent build up it's nice to see everybody getting along except for Jay Sun but I don't know it's um I think this is one of those types of books that you really need to have in terms of the story because it's advancing it, but it's advancing it in such a way where it's like, you know, one of those side story things that, that add flavor to everything. Um, so for that, I appreciate that. And, you know, Hickman, even though I'm really bad-mouthing you, I still enjoyed it. Um, I, But I don't think that this was definitely not a book of the week, for sure. Now, maybe if Jason got killed... Maybe if there's a little, you know what I'm talking about, between Miss Marvel and the alien. Uh, or, and, and you, you know, you can't say you didn't think that. And, um, or maybe if they killed Cannonball and Sunspot, you know, I would have been pretty happy. Then I would have said Book of the Week, for sure. The Hunt. I don't know what to think about this. I honestly don't. Because this book was just... It's not even getting. It's not even really getting into the the of the meat of the story. Basically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to recreate the contest of champions, and what they're doing is they're taking all of the schools. You know, the Jean Grey School, the Future Foundation, the Avengers Academy, and several other schools, including one for Doctor Doom, and they're all going to send their bright, best and brightest, and they're going to compete to see who's the best. And I'm like, so this all this thing was was an introduction to brand new characters. Now, the most interesting character is this girl right here, Pom Pom. And I bet you you're going, if you have not read this book, why is she interesting? Look at it this way. She's from Asia. And her power is she can generate nearly limitless supply of organic tendrils that obey her every command. Now, while that's sinking through your brain, I'll put it to you as simple as this. She is a tentacle monster that can take care of herself. Book of the week. But anyways, besides that, that's all of this is. It's just an introduction of who everybody is, and then we get, um, it ties in at the very end to uh, Infinity. So, you know, I think this is probably one of the weakest books also for something that's going to be building up into something bigger. So unfortunately, I'm going to buy probably the next several issues just so this way I can see what's going on and figure out what's, you know, how this is going to tie into post-Infinity. And I can kind of see where things are going to be going because I have a feeling Arcade is going to, you know, grab some of these kids, either that or else they're going to somehow end up on our, regardless, they're going to end up mixing it up with Arcade. Anyways, let me get you some free books. Um, we'll get you the Mighty. And I'll get you the hunt. This book actually does have some humor at the beginning, too. But then uh, the humor quickly disappears when you start hearing Hank Pym just talking and talking and talking and talking. And I'll get you this one, too.
And you know what? I don't think you'll ever hear another reviewer say you have a superhero who is a tentacle monster. Anyways, that's it for this week. Well, at least for right now. I'll try to do some more because I know I got I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to do. Um, I'm just really behind, and um, I'll have more reviews and stuff later. Uh, so until next time.